see this morning. Well, you know something? I think I've got something new here. You're going to like this, Chip. All right. Today, we have a special guest, Chip Alsui, the VP of External Affairs at AAOC. Chip has extensive experience in working with real estate interest groups, focusing on community engagement and policy development. He'll be sharing his expertise on the upcoming 2024 ballot initiatives and their potential impact on real estate in California and Orange County. Good morning, Chip. How are you doing today? Good. How do you like that intro? I like that. It was. It was. It it, made me sound important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, uh, we might have to listen then. I know. So what's going on? Is there anything new going on in the world of uh, real estate and initiatives? And yeah, there, uh, there's always something, as I'm sure you're well aware. Um, one of the biggest things that we're coming up on is we're hitting the deadlines for when cities and the state can get their ballot initiatives in for what we're going to see in November. Is that when they can get them in, or is it the time when they get them in and the uh, the Supreme Court still has time to get them off. Well, yeah, we did have that come up <laughs> last week. Uh, for any of you that aren't familiar, we did have a ballot initiative that was qualified by signatures, got more than it needed, uh, that would have limited the ability of cities and counties to raise taxes unless it met a higher threshold. And the Supreme Court and the governor decided, no, we don't like that, and they threw it off the ballot. Is there is there a possibility of something like that to go to a higher level? Uh, yeah, actually, just last week, I met with uh, James Lacey, who's one of the attorneys on the lawsuit, um, one of a former council member from Data Point. So he's a, okay. he's a great uh, local leader. And he said they are going to be appealing it. They're going to be bringing it forward and seeing if they can get it put back on because the, the decision didn't seem to make a lot of sense with the California Constitution. I mean, if you qualify an initiative. Wait a second. Something not making sense with the California. I, I know it's strange. You know. Shocks the heck out of us, Chip. <laughs> the, the California would not make sense on something here. Right. So, um, yeah, there will still be time until roughly August 9th is when the final deadline is for everything to go on the ballot. And that includes candidates. So if you're thinking about running for office, let us know. We want to support good people that actually understand these issues to get onto, onto councils and get elected. But, uh, yeah, no, there will still be time there. Locally, however, uh, this is the last week that cities can do anything to get on the ballot in Orange County for trans, uh, transient occupancy taxes for hotels or Airbnbs and things like that, uh, sales taxes or any bond measures. So, Is there is, anything exciting going on that we should know about? Locally, yeah, there, is, there are a few. Um, we're going to see a couple sales taxes or something happening. The city of Orange was up until late last night. Uh, discussing the possibility of putting a sales tax on. And they ended up having to schedule a special meeting for Friday to put that on. And there are other cities taking a look at this. And the real truth of the matter is coming down the pike, every city's facing some massive deficits. So within the next election or two, just about every city in Orange County is going to end up having to face something like this. Really? Yeah. And you know, it's, it's amazing how they, they constantly look at the idea. Let's raise the taxes instead of finding where we can cut some spending? Well, a lot of other cities in Orange County do focus, uh, spend a lot of time focusing on that. And some of it comes from just uncovering things that they didn't know were going to be uh, costs, things that had been kicked down the road a number of times. So there are cities that are spending a lot of time working hard trying to find those cuts. Um, could there be more? Sure. There, there's always opportunity. Well, you, you know, it's the old saying that... Uh, you know, once you get a, a a government project, you never get rid of it. That is very true. You know, and, and you, you just look at it and say, you know, what if we went to the old business way and say, okay, we've got X dollars in revenue. We can't spend anything more than X dollars. So where are we going to you know, be responsible? That is one of the harder challenges that a lot of them have because, yeah, you, you can have that. Um, but part of it is what are your revenue streams? And the state keeps taking away taxes from local government. So it, it makes it harder for them to meet their obligations. And the state doesn't seem to care. Well, that's that's a real surprise <laughs> also. Uh, you know, I, I, I think, um, uh, I think Gomer would get uh, tired of all the time. Oh, we, we could use that same, <laughs> same, same sound sounds here. It, it's, it just boggles me that, you know, you get a, a state that has, you know, so many billions of dollars in a budget and they can't find, you know, who was the, the uh, congressperson? Uh, I think his name was Penny. And they actually had the Penny plan. Right? Oh, so yeah. Every, every budget or every, every uh, 
issue had to be reduced by one percent. You know, every every line item. Yeah. Uh, well, and if you remember, Vivek Ramaswamy's plan originally was that he wanted to cut everything in the federal government day one by fifty percent, which seems a bit extreme. And I'll say, especially a number like that, uh, you're not going to be able to do that. But no, any, I mean, but continually reducing by a penny gets us down to where we need to. Yeah, and you look at it. I mean, fifty percent. I, I wouldn't want to say that we're going to cut our um, mili- our, our uh, police by fifty percent or our fire by fifty percent. Right. Exactly. You know, those things. And then you start saying, okay, well, if you can't do that, then you can't do this one and that one and the next pet project. And continuing our conversation, Chip Allsweet, VP of External Affairs of AAOC. What is AAOC? It's the Apartment Association of Orange County. Okay, so you guys got to get involved in all of this uh, initiative stuff and keep track and. Being that you are the VP, so the, <laughs> you have to know all these things that are going on. Yeah, I try to keep it top of as much of it as possible. I mean, it is California; it is a constantly evolving uh, situation. But yeah, we we do follow these, and and specifically, we take a look at it from a real estate and an investment in real estate perspective. So it's not from a partisan perspective. No, not at all. Uh, in fact, we support both sides fairly equally. Uh, and we've got great relationships because realistically, housing isn't a partisan issue. I mean, there's elements to it that appeal to both Republicans and Democrats alike. Yeah, although you know, I would like to get the penthouse of that six hundred thousand dollar a unit place in L.A. Well, <laughs> I have to be homeless though for that, right? Yeah, you do, um, and that that would be nice because then you could also have that lovely graffiti on the outside of the building. Is that the one you're talking about? No, the other one, the new one that they just opened up. It was six hundred thousand dollars per unit, and it was twenty three stories. Just opened recently. I'll have to look into that one. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It looked. It looked like from the outside, it looks pretty good, and it's got a a gym inside and high speed internet. And Not it's, bad. It's, all, it's a homeless shelter. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. So, what are some of the initiatives, Chip? We got to get into these. So things. yeah. So as of right now, uh, there are fourteen that will be qualified for the uh, November election. There's one pending signatures, and included in that fourteen is that one that we mentioned that. Uh, it was kicked off the ballot. So we don't know the ultimate fate of that. Um, as of right now, it will not be on November, but we'll see what happens with that. But um, there are a number that are going to affect uh, real estate and housing. Uh, one, you may have remembered uh, last year, they passed an initiative at the state level called the ACA one, uh, which is the housing is a human right. Um, because apparently we need to just give housing to everybody. Uh, it's not something you earn or work towards. So that's an initiative. Um, it was originally going to be on the March ballot, but they moved it to the November ballot. Um, the bigger ones that we're really looking at that are going to be very impacting is the AIDS Healthcare Foundation has once again come out with an initiative to pass rent control statewide. With AIDS Healthcare. Right. To, for, for, for rent control. Correct. Uh, oh. If you remember... In 2018, they came forward with Prop 10, which was statewide rent control. And then they did it again in 2020 with Prop 21, which was statewide rent control again. And this one would allow a number of things that are actually kind of frightening. First off, it would make it uh, any city could implement it, whether they're a charter city or a general law city. That's been one of the, like the delineations up till now is who's been able to implement it. But it also takes away the cost of Hawkins protections, which protects single family homes from being subject to this. So if you have a single family home that you're renting out, it would be fall under rent control. And the most insidious of it all is the concept of vacancy decontrol. It's not really a conversation we have down here in Orange County very often because nobody has it. But effectively, if you're renting your unit out at $1,000 a month and the tenant moves out, normally you bring that up to the market rate. Right. This would say, no, you keep it at that rate forever. That's crazy. Yeah. It's also what keeps over 100,000 units off the market in New York. And it's why there's about 50,000 in the city of San Francisco not being rented out. So when we talk about affordability and all those issues, this is exactly where it comes from because a constrained market keeps people from having housing. So why would you even want to? I mean, we're already seeing in Los Angeles that people don't want to to uh, get involved in any kind of, of uh, investment properties. Absolutely. Most of the people I know are taking their money, taking it out of state. And and uh, yet, well, there's, there's, who's so who's going to be the one out telling, other, other than you guys, telling us about this AIDS healthcare rent control? Uh, well, luckily, the CEO there, Mr. Michael Weinstein, 
uh, has managed to upset just about everybody in the state. Um, he's lost state and national contracts for the programs he's running. The LA Times has even ran exposés on him, pointing out that he's effectively a slumlord because he, uh, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation owns about a thousand units in downtown LA that are at substandard living conditions. So maybe keep control of your own side of the street before you come over and tell me what to do on mine. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Well, and you know something? You've got to really be a whack job for the Times to go against you. Yeah, you really, really. Because I mean, they're a bunch of whack jobs as it is. That, yep, absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, uh, he's done himself no political favors here to the point where the California Apartment Association put forward a ballot initiative that is effect. It's called the Protect Patients Now Initiative. It effectively says if you are a healthcare agency that spends over a hundred million dollars a year in a 10 year period on something other than healthcare purposes, you lose your funding, you lose your ability to keep your nonprofit status. It takes away all of those elements from them. And I, I really applaud them for stepping forward and doing that because this group that has a wonderful mission supporting AIDS patients, sure. love it has spent in the last three, uh, this election included, will have spent in the neighborhood of $150 million on a political campaign that could have been spent on patients or, I don't know, building the housing you actually want to see built. And the industry itself each time has had to come through with $80 million apiece to stop this from happening. Well, that's the problem with so many of these initiatives in California is how much money are we spending on all these initiatives and what can we do? I mean, we not we might be out of debt if we didn't spend all this money on these, or things. at least have a few more uh, roofs that people can move in on, and that affordability issue would be solved. Now, have you seen the way the initiative is written? Yes, yeah, we've read so, through it. It's so, are these are these initiatives that we're going to be able to understand, or are these initiatives that you know nobody understands, and and you have to get a a uh, lawyer to tell you that yes means no, and no means yes, and It'll be pretty straightforward on the yes or no side of things. Okay. It's not one of those ones where you vote for it and that means that this then does that. It's it's not like that. No. With the uh, AIDS Healthcare fund, funded initiative, uh, the so-called Justice for Renters Act uh, that would do take away all of these things, protections for property owners and even for tenants. Uh, that one is just going to be a straight up yes or no vote. It, it, yes, if you think that rent control is a great idea because it's done such wonderful things for cities like San Francisco and, and Los Angeles, then it goes into effect. If you vote no because you realize this is insanely detrimental to anybody getting involved in building or investing in housing in California, it's going down. And latest polling does show that it is failing, which is good. encouraging. The last two times it went down by 60%. You would think at some point you'd figure out this is not popular. We don't need to do this. Yeah, and the irony is that the guy has a lot of money, so he can keep putting throwing money at it. And right. then everybody else has to throw money at trying to educate people on why it's not good. Mm -hmm. And that causes more problems. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Well, let's continue our conversation. Chip Allsweet is with us, the, the VP of External Affairs, AAOC. I think you're talking about government. You know, you gotta, you got to be careful of the naming of these things anymore. Yeah. External Affairs. I know. As opposed to Internal Affairs. I don't have to pay anybody off for <laughs> okay. <what> I do. <laughs> so, uh, Jim Norton says, uh, Chip or I should post a summary sheet to these initiatives, including ACA 13. Yeah. Happy to do that. Okay. So... Uh, Got, there you go, Jim. You got uh, you posted that. You got the answer right there. So okay, we've got to what uh, two or three of the uh, these. In Let me ask you this because this is my way of looking at, at initiatives and bonds and all those things. I start out saying no to everything. I do the same. Do you? Okay, <laughs> and then try and, and you're studying this stuff all yeah. the time, and then say okay, what is it that we really, really, really need? Right. You know, like the bond initiatives. There's I can't think of any bond that we need. There's the government's got so much the state. So much money that we're wasting. I think you can look at a lot of what we've done recently. And, and I think that the government has done a poor job of making sure that we understand what we're voting on, that we've voted for things because it says, oh, it's a water uh, bond. And that sounds great. Of course, we want to have clean water and all that. But it's not always going to those purposes. Well, we never have a water bond. We have a, a bond that's going to benefit senior citizens or a bond that's going to benefit the education of, of kids, which we do a crappy job of. That's true. Um, or the one that I that that I almost fell off my chair yesterday, hundred and ten million dollars that the U.S. is sending to Haiti. Yeah, 
You got to love these. Well, let's get back to California. Yeah. What else do we have going on in California? So there are other initiatives that are going to be on there. Um, a lot of them, you know, uh, to your point about I always vote no it, or start off from a perspective of no. I, I think it's a wise choice because often we're asked to vote on things that why why would the average citizen know anything about this? That's why you well, that's why we have representative government. We have someone there to learn the issue and re elect vote for us. But you got well, I know the answer to that question. It's because we don't trust the California government. I wish that were the case. More often than not, these initiatives are brought forward by an interest group that wants to right. get their perspective through and can't get it through the legislature. So the initiatives are bad, and then we can't trust the 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 legislators. <laughs> Yeah. Aren't we lucky in California? Well, and if you look at it, you know, an elected official has kind of an impossible job. It's understand how everything out there, all elements of the economy, all industries are affected. But they got what, how many dozens of people on their staff? And then they get at the federal level, yeah, they do. At and the then, state well, level, you got a couple, and then local, most cities, they've got nobody other than the city staff themselves. Okay. So it, it it's it's hard. You're having to trust effectively bureaucrats to tell you the truth. <laughs> that's we know that's not a good idea that's a, that's that's a uh that's a, a recipe for disaster exactly okay so what else do we have going on um a number a number of the other initiatives we're looking at some of the things like uh they're looking for some reforms to prop 47 which was the one that lowered the crime um uh the penalties for for criminal activities in the state so they're looking to reform that and bring some of the things back like make it actually a felony if you steal 950 dollars worth of stuff that kind of stuff. So that's that's actually a good one, an example of a good one. Depending on your perspective, uh, you know, the Taxpayer Protection Act, the one that was kind of thrown off the ballot, that's a good one because it requires a higher level before we choose to tax ourselves anymore. Um, but then there are a couple things in there. Uh, one, actually, I think you'll like. There's a ballot initiative that will require high schools to conduct a financial uh, literacy course before someone graduates which I think isn't a bad idea, especially when you talk about everything you've touched on here, all of these people with outstanding credit card debt and carrying the highest in our history. That's partially because these people were not financially illiterate when they made these decisions. You're going to love this, Chip, because I've gotten involved with a group called First Home IQ. Okay. And their their mission is to bring financial literacy to our, our younger generation. Yeah. And... Kristen Messerly is is their director there, and she studies the Gen Z and millennials, and with like six thousand, she has surveys like six thousand people every year to come up with their knowledge base and and what they're thinking and their thoughts are. And she came out with this quiz that that we 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 uh, uh, promote, and you can go to rsrlinks.com slash fhiq rsrlinks.com slash fhiq. Would you like to take a wild guess? At what the the uh, the the grading is on this, and it's an easy it's an easy easy test, but take a wild wild guess of what you think might be their their uh, success rate, or the or the score the average score. Sixty percent. Wow, you're good. <laughs> it's actually fifty seven. Wow. All right. Fifty seven is the actual is their score on it, and you look at it and you say. What are we doing as as parents educating the and and schools educating our kids when they're getting a fifty seven on on the test? Well, how how many how many parents actually talk to their kids about finances? I mean, I do occasionally, but I don't go into depth on it. Now, I will be. I will uh, throw out there that uh, Josh got a hundred on it, so he did it, and <laughs> nice. he got, he got a hundred. So if you want information on on uh, financial literacy, just talk to Josh because he's. He's got it there. Well done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know something? It's it's amazing how many people just they, you know, when when I was in school, we used to have to carry. Nobody does a checkbook anymore, right? Right. We had to carry those checkbooks around yeah. and pay our bills and our mortgage or our rent or, or the original the bank account pass. Yeah. Uh, book you had. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. No. No. But I'll say, you know, I've got one uh, one son who's just turned eighteen. And uh, he's managed to sock away, just graduated high school, he's, he's managed to sock away about $4,000 just from working since about November. So even though I say I haven't necessarily taught them great financial literacy, I got one that's clearly doing great with it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. 
you know, he'll be able to to go and get his own house or car or something. Continue on that. I think he definitely will be that one. He's he's a uh, absolute spendthrift. I mean, he just he he's better than me on, on a lot of it, in a lot of ways. So yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Um, when it comes back to the initiatives, you know, there's a lot of different things out there supporting this that, and the other thing. We have one. There's always an initiative. It seems that I feel like we as citizens shouldn't be voting on. My favorite one of all time was uh, whether or not when a horse dies, if that could be used in animal food consumption, because apparently that was a common thing. I've never owned a horse. I've never raised a horse. I know nothing about horses other than what they look like. And I've ridden a few and that's fun. But asking me as a voter to decide how that animal is most of, it's kind of crazy to me. Last time I got on a horse, you know what you know what I heard? What's that? Guess I can't get the soundboard to work. Ow! Yeah, <laughs> that was I hear it. the same. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have you come back again, Chip. With so much of this stuff going on, we're gonna have to put that list together so we can uh, get a, a a sensible voters' guide through Ron Segal Radio. Absolutely. 